one thing that I really think has enhanced our curriculum is using the iPads. And just having access to them allows us to really take advantage of everything that's out there. Um, for example, we have done all kinds of units, but one of the units we did was a global marketplaces unit. And during our global marketplaces unit, we studied about stores all over the place. And we certainly know what's available here, but we sent out Twitter messages to our friends and we said, where do you shop? And we got messages back from people in different countries saying what stores they shopped at. We also even got one of our um, Twitter friends sent us a video of a marketplace in Morocco. So again, this is all in real time. We're sending out questions and getting responses back pretty much immediately. We follow other classrooms around the country and around the world. Um, the kids in my classroom like to call these connections our friends. And so we have friends in Ireland, we have friends in Australia, we have friends in lots of other schools within the United States. We had a special connection at one point this year with a class in Atlanta, Georgia, where we set up that they would be our partners for this project, and we Skyped with them several times over the course of the book, shared our thoughts on the book, we sort of rewrote a chapter, and they rewrote a chapter, and we shared our new chapters. So at that point, technology was really used to spur a relationship. If you had seen my students on the day when we had a Skype call scheduled, you wouldn't have any question about how excited they are about technology and the importance of technology. They knew that we were going to connect with these other kids. They looked forward to that opportunity. They planned what they would say because they were going to be sharing their thoughts with children in another classroom. Probably one of the, the biggest benefits that I've seen from being able to use technology is the fact that there are some children who just are reluctant readers, reluctant writers, and I really feel like this has made a big impact on those students. Um, for example, there was one little guy in my classroom who, if you gave him paper and pencil, he would just kind of sit and it was really difficult for him to establish what he wanted to say to get started on writing. But if I handed that boy the iPad and it was time for him to send a Twitter message, he wrote so much in the form of typing, but he was getting his thoughts out, he was expressing them, he was getting responses back, which is what made it such an authentic way of writing. Because he wasn't just writing it down, putting that piece of paper in a folder, and perhaps having his teacher see it or his parents. People all over the world were having the opportunity to see what he wrote. Why are you so sad, child? He asked. Because I must learn to We do a lot of listen to reading. It's great for students to have a model of what fluent reading sounds like. Some of the books we read are actually that are part of our curriculum are on YouTube. They can listen to that book. Then after they're finished, they might partner read that book with somebody. They've already heard a fluent model of the book being read. Then they have a chance to read it to a partner. They can read it on their own and then perhaps answer some response questions to it. But it's something that we're already doing. I just see it getting better and better. This is just really my second year of using technology to the extent that I am. I think it's becoming much more a piece of the classroom. It's not an extra. We don't necessarily plan every lesson saying we will use technology for this, we'll use it for that. The students in my class know that it's available, they know what we have, and actually they're the ones that sometimes bring up, oh we should look this up or we should do that. For example, we were reading in our scholastic news one time about the red double-decker buses in England and the kids were fascinated by them. And one of the students said, hey, we have a Twitter class that's our friend in England, we should ask them. So then we got online, immediately we sent them a Twitter message, do you ride double-decker buses? And we got back lots of responses from the children there that yes, they do ride double-decker buses. And there was a little conversation back and forth, what color are your school buses in America? So we did you know, just a quick exchange where I wouldn't have even thought to do that. It brought that Scholastic News article so much more to life to think that there were people that really my children consider, or my students consider their friends, that they were riding those kinds of buses that they read about in a newspaper. What are you going to find if you do that? I don't know. A what would you? You got it. Great discovery. Another thing that I notice happening as a result of technology is reluctant writers, reluctant readers are becoming much more engaged with print because they see it not just in book form but they see it um, in text on iPads, they see it on the smart board. So they know that there are a lot of ways 
to really approach reading. There are a lot of reasons for reading and we certainly like the traditional style of book and we use that a lot, but I think this is just an added component to the literacy in my classroom. They are very focused like that, when we're on? using technology. It is a part of their world and it makes sense to me that we meet them in the world that they have. They have all kinds of technology available to them and they're used to using it. It's intuitive for them. So to me, I don't really consider the technology to be an extra. It's just part of what we should be doing.